Today, around the world, in the universities, a picture is being taught about electric resonance that isn't fully complete. It is missing vital information. And today, in this video, I want to share this information with you so you can use it for your benefit. My name is Ivo. I'm doing open source research into free electricity. And I share all the information on this channel so we can all benefit from it. And to be clear, I'm not talking about solar, or wind energy, I'm talking about 24 seven free electricity for all, because it is possible, we need to engineer it, and that is what I'm doing. So follow me along this journey of discovery. Now let's take a look at the graph that is being taught at the universities today. You have the axis of time and you have the axis of voltage and current vertical. Then you have two sine waves. One is the voltage and the other is the current of a resonant system. Now, as you can see, the voltage is leading the current. So it becomes maximum first before the current becomes maximum. But actually, this is not correct because way back in the time when Benjamin Franklin did his experiments with electricity with his kite in the air, he said current is flowing from positive voltage to negative voltage. And we started using that concept, although we learned that it is not correct. It flows from negative to positive. So if we apply this knowledge to that graph that is being taught on the universities, then the current should be 180 degrees phase shifted, which means simply that the current is leading the voltage. So in reality, things already are different than what is being taught. Something is missing in what the universities around the world teach you this day about electric resonance. Now, what is this? It is the displacement current. Now, before we take a deeper look at this, let me define the three electric fields that are present in an electric resonance system. First of all, what I've always called the dielectric field. The dielectric field is actually the same as the electrostatic field. Electrostatic field is what you feel when you, you pull off your plastic sweater and it, it makes that sound. That is the electrostatic field. A Wimhurst generator also produces a electrostatic field. Secondly, there is the magnetic field. The magnetic field is an energy flow around a coil. Then the third field, which is very misunderstood and often neglected in research, the displacement current. The displacement current is what flows between the plates of a capacitor when it is being charged or discharged. So with the example of a capacitor, you can have an electrostatic field between the plates if there is a voltage difference over the plates of the capacitor. But when that voltage keeps changing, energy must be flowing. And this energy flow related to the capacity and the change in voltage in time is the displacement current. The magnetic current, the conventional current, is defined differently. It is defined by the change of voltage not in time, like in the capacitor, but in space. When we put a voltage over a coil, then it can generate a magnetic field. And that field strength is dependent on the change of voltage over the coil and the inductance of the coil. And the inductance of the coil is the ability to produce a magnetic field and store energy in there. So we got electrostatic, which is the dielectric field. We have displacement current, which is when the electrostatic field becomes dynamic, when the energy starts moving, when the electrostatic lines of force start moving across the conductor, between the conductors. Then it drags along a certain volume of energy, and that is the displacement current. And when these electric lines of force, this electrostatic field, which is the voltage, moves along a coil, which has that voltage difference over it, then the energy movement, the energy flow forms a vortex of energy. And this vortex of energy is the magnetic field. 
The magnetic field is defined by the inductance of the coil and the voltage over the coil, so the voltage in space. It's a spatial definition. While the displacement current is the energy flow between the capacitor plates and related to the change in voltage in time. And time and space are the two dimensions we are living in. So in a resonance system, there is energy flowing between the coil and the capacitor. And the energy goes back and forth between the coil and the capacitor. At one time, all the energy is within the coil. And then you have a very strong magnetic field at its maximum. While the electrostatic field, the voltage, is completely zero in the capacitor. Now that then returns. The energy of the magnetic field starts returning to charge up the capacitor with an electrostatic field. But to do so, it needs that displacement current. So that magnetic current creates a displacement current in the capacitor and this displacement current then creates an electrostatic field until the capacitor is fully charged up with a voltage, with an electrostatic field, with a dielectric field. And at its maximum, there is no magnetic field. There is no current flow. It is pure electrostatic voltage. So if we return to the graph and see what's going on, and we say, well, Benjamin Franklin was a little bit wrong, because it's flowing from negative to positive, and we draw in all three of these sine waves, then we can see that the displacement current is indeed leading the voltage, but also the magnetic current is leading the voltage. So these two overlap. They are in phase, simultaneously present. And that made me wonder, is that because it's the same energy flow? Well, yes, of course. In a resonant system, these energy flows are exactly the same. They are only differently defined. One is defined by the inductance of the coil and the other is defined by the capacity of the capacitor. And then the voltage over the coil and the voltage changing in time of the capacitor. So, now you know. You can imagine a resonant system to be defined by the coil and the capacitor. And so these two elements define the two currents. If the coil is very small, has only a few turns, has a low inductance, then it can allow very large currents to flow. While the capacitor is very big, then that capacitor will have an electrostatic field on its very large plates that is relatively low in voltage. And this makes it so that there is a lot of current flowing back and forth. There's an energy flow that is huge between the large capacitor and that small coil when it is resonant. But at the same frequency, we can do the inverse. At the same resonant frequency, we can make the capacitor very small and make a very large inductor, like a Tesla coil. Many, many, many windings, very small capacitance. And with a Tesla coil, the capacitance is actually between the turns of the winding of the coil. So then you have small capacitance, and you have a large coil. That large coil can produce very high voltages, but low conventional currents. And that very small capacitor also is able to create very high voltages and tiny displacement currents. So this phenomenon of being tuned to the same resonant frequency, but playing with the size of the inductance and the capacitance, make one bigger than the other or vice versa, defines how the energy in the system is defined. Is there a lot of electrostatic voltage or is there a lot of energy flow? And it's good to keep in mind. But let's stick to the Tesla coil. What happens with that Tesla coil? The Tesla coil, when resonant, can produce massive high voltages. So high that it even ionizes the air and, and makes beautiful sparks. This is because the capacity between the turns of the coil is very, very low. And we have a very high amount of windings, so a very large inductance. So high inductance, low capacity. And that's a recipe for 
very high voltages and relatively low currents. Now that voltage is huge. So together with that small capacity, it creates extreme electrostatic fields between the turns of that coil. And if you look at that electrostatic field, then you will notice that the field is not sitting perfectly between the turns of the coil anymore. It starts to move out of it. And this bending of the electrostatic field is called fringing. And it's forming thus a fringing field. The electrostatic field of a Tesla coil is fringing outside of the turns of the windings. And so much outside that it also starts moving displacement current in and out of the coil from the ambient medium. And that is really unique. That is special. That is also the reason why if you take a neon bulb and place it near a Tesla coil, it lights up. That is because the electrostatic field is very high and it's fringing outside of the coil. The field lines try to terminate outside of the coil. This makes it an open circuit. And that is very interesting because the law of thermodynamics only applies to closed circuits. So a parallel resonant coil with a parallel capacitor is a form of a closed circuit. But a Tesla coil isn't a closed circuit. You can have it driven at the base and grounded at the base, but the top is open-ended. And there are all the voltages produced. And that voltage is electrostatic. And it grabs the surrounding energies and it brings it in and out of that coil, forming displacement currents, energy flows from and to the ambient medium, the surroundings, which is, in my opinion, full of energy because the whole universe is energy. Everything is a manifestation of energy. So back to that Tesla coil, we can use that because we already saw that the magnetic conventional current is equal as the displacement current. It's the same energy flow. So then the question becomes, can we use that displacement current to replace the magnetic current when we are powering a load? And I say, yes, it is possible. And to do this, you need something they in the universities call parasitic capacitance. It sounds very negative, but it isn't if you use it correctly. The coil has not only got inductance, the ability to store energy in its magnetic field. A coil also has a small amount of capacitance. So the ability to store energy in its electrostatic field. And that's interesting because if you want to generate power, we need those two components. We need that electrostatic field and we need that magnetic current, but that current is just an energy flow. And so I say, why don't we use the displacement energy flow? Because we already have that fringing field if the voltage is very high and this can bring in external energy. See where I'm going? I am doing experiments with this theory so subscribe if you want to learn more. There's a lot of information on my channel. If you want to support me, you can become a channel member. You can also put a donation on PayPal and make it recurring if you want to. If you've got questions, please ask them in the comment section. Let me know if you like this video or dislike it. It's okay. Give a thumbs up or thumbs down. I'll see you next video.